Welcome back to Cheap Pop. This is your host, Derek Kirby, diving back into the mystery of John Carpenter's The Thing. Now, in part one, we took an examination at who sabotaged the blood bank and pretty much tackled all of act one, play by play, telling you who was the first infected, who was then subsequently infected, how we know they are the first two infected in the order of infection, and pretty much anything else of major consequence from the first act of this film. We're going to break this part now into the mystery of the blood test and basically all of Act 2 as it relates as well. There will then be a third part to this series that will come out a few days later that will wrap up the film's crazy third act when things really get the most difficult to keep a hold of. So without further ado, let's dive into Act 2 and figure out the blood test. There are times in this film where they find torn long johns. It happened on the first night after the incident in the dog kennel, and it happens again later on. We find dirty long johns in the trash. Now, this tells us somebody was infected. This tells us somebody was taken over, and the only character you never see wearing long johns in this film after the first scene is Norris. So there you go. Boom. Norris first infected because Palmer still has long johns on for a little bit longer. From here we pivot to a glum scene with McCready speaking into a tape recorder. This is a important thing as it's kind of the only verbal documentation of any kind made in the film and it's kind of assessing the situation. And it includes lines of him talking about, I think it tears through your clothes when it takes you over. This is important because as he relays in this recording, a second torn pair of long johns has been found. Again, I believe this second pair belongs to Palmer. From here, we pivot to an interaction with Fuchs. Fuchs has been going through Blair's notebook, finding out anything he can and conducting his own tests. Again, this is the important note, and it was part of what threw me off the trail in the past. Fuchs, at this point, tells McCready, single droplets of blood, a single particle from this thing can be enough to assimilate. It doesn't have to be the vicious, violent act of the physical takeover we've seen to date. This immediately raises question into McCready's mind about, I know of two things, I believe. Maybe there's more. And again, no one in the group is ever referencing the other part of the dog thing that broke away, which blows my mind. Right after Fuchs tells McCready that they need to prepare their own food, not share anything, and eat out of cans, McCready basically gives a flat, all right, he walks off screen, and not five seconds later, the lights go out. Fuchs moves to the doorway, the dark doorway, holding just a candle, a lit candle in his hand. And you get a quick shock, an accoutrement of terror as a figure blurs by. Who's that? Who this figure is, is pretty unclear. Now, this does relate to something else later in the film, the exact same sound effect. Which leads me to believe it's one person, but upon further inspection, it could still be someone else. Fuchs follows the figure out into the snow by himself, and he finds a torn jacket with McCready's name on it. It's McCready's green jacket from the start of the film. This would seem to imply that McCready is now the thing. We don't see what happened to Fuchs as it happened. What we do find is his charred remains, and it's unclear within the group what happened. Although McCready does speculate that perhaps using his flare, he ignited his own body to kill himself. Because one of two things happened in my mind. Either he just completely lost faith in the world because we see how, how much he looks to McCready and how dependent on him he is and his advice, how he is his only confidant, and he is their fearless leader. So maybe in his mind, if McCready is turned, maybe he just, life isn't worth living, I'm gonna burn myself alive. That's an awful way to go, but I guess you can't completely rule it out. More likely, however, I think Fuchs is confronted by the thing. Why the thing would try to frame McCready only to then turn around and try and kill Fuchs anyway, also up for debate. But Fuchs, it's believed, kills himself before he can be assimilated. Worth noting. 
while they're looking for Fuchs, it's about an hour from the time McCready last sees Fuchs before they find his body. McCready goes back to Blair's tool shed, and when he visits him, Blair is suddenly chill. He's very chill, but something is amiss. He's almost too chill. I feel much better now. I'd like to come inside. Hey, didn't you hear me? I said I'm better now. I want to come inside. The thing is usually an excellent actor, as we see in other parts of this film. It can perfectly mimic a person's tendencies, tones, everything. It can act really well when it has to. This is not a good case of that. There's a very clear noose he has fashioned hanging from one of the rafters there. Now, when you first saw them lock him up on the wall next to the door, there actually was a bit of rope there. He clearly fashioned himself a noose. So why would a man craft his own noose after going on the rampage he did and suddenly went back inside? He says he heard weird things outside and he wants to see. But while McCready is expressing doubt and concern over who might be infected, McCready even speculates that it might be Fuchs. And for some reason, Blair is able to very definitively tell him, it's not Fuchs. That's a weird thing to say there. Why would you, how would you know, and why would you give up that information? There's only one window in the tool shed, and it's been boarded up prior. So the odds that he actually saw what happened to Fuchs, very unlikely. Very unlikely indeed. Now, earlier in the film, when he was still crazy, the last thing he told McCready was that he wanted him to keep an eye on Clark. We find out later Clark is still human. So that's a misnomer. Clark was just the one initially left alone with the dog, the dog thing. And so that was Blair's paranoia thinking. After this interaction in which McCready locks Blair back in the tool shed, really just closes the latch through which he was talking to him. It's not like the door was open. He, Nulls, and Windows head out to try and find Fuchs, eventually finding his charred remains, speculating over what led to his death. And then at that point, when asking what to do next, McCready says, Where are we going? Up to my shack. What the hell for? Because when I left yesterday, I turned the lights off. The light in his shack is shown to be on. Somebody has been in his place. Moments later, back just inside the door of the facility, we see Nalls rush inside. Nalls is by himself. It sounds like Nalls and McCready went to McCready's shack, while Windows went back to tell the group where they were going. Pretty smart, really, to at least keep that line of communication open. But when Nalls returns alone, he tells Childs and the rest of the group that he found McCready's torn jacket. It is the same jacket that Fuchs found, although Nalls does not believe McCready saw him find it. Panicking, Nalls fled and cut the line back. Considering there's a deadly blizzard going on right now and it's about 100 below, it's very unlikely McCready would even find his way back. But wouldn't you know it, right on cue, the door handle starts to turn. Now the door is locked, McCready cannot get in. But this is another important moment here. Palmer, who by the way I believe has been the one framing McCready this whole time, is oddly gung-ho about them opening the door. Now, it is true he's holding a flamethrower, and Childs has a flamethrower as well, but it's odd that he wants to let the thing in, let alone in such close quarters. Interesting as well as with the particle theory as far as assimilation, Palmer is spitting everywhere as he talks here. When asking about letting him in, Childs refuses. Childs, what if we're wrong about him? Why then we're wrong? He does not care if McCready is actually innocent and dies out there because he believes in absolute shutdown, lockdown protection. This is also pretty important for the big mystery at the end. As they're debating whether or not to let McCready in, McCready actually goes around the building and breaks into a storage closet, which if you initially try and figure out the floor plan of this place, seems like it's somewhere different than it actually is. Supply window. All right, all right. We got no choice now. Damn it, he's got the keys. When he breaks through, he's actually not breaking into the room directly behind them, but one room down from that. This is very important for a shot that has fooled many, many people, and again, this is a shout out to Matt moment here. McCready is breaking into the storage closet. 
to make sure nobody attacks him because he knows they question him, whether he heard them or simply is putting two and two together as unclear. But when they come through, McCready is sitting there with a lit fuse holding it in front of a stick of dynamite. A bundle of dynamite, no less. He basically says, anyone gets near me, we all go up. And he's basically threatening to kill everybody if they don't give him a chance to clear his name. Childs wants nothing of it. No part of it. But McCready is then attacked by two people. As he's trying to back them down, he's attacked by Norris and by Windows. Norris crashes into one of the shelves, collapses, heart attack, dies. Now, moments earlier, Norris thing, again, I think Norris is the first infected, even when no one's looking, he's showing strain and stress on his heart, which leads me to believe that his infection was not the violent assimilation. His clothes, his long johns were not torn. They were simply dirty. I believe in his case, how he was turned is the dog thing at the very beginning, not the one that broke through the ceiling, the one that walked right into camp being chased by the helicopter. I believe it licked his face when we saw it go into his room and we saw his silhouette. And I think he has been slowly turning this entire film. He dies of a heart attack. Minutes later, he turns. Now, McCready has to clear his name, but seeing that Norris appears to have had a heart attack and actually giving a rat's ass about the team, he allows them to treat them. Norris's body is then carried into the next room, and Dr. Copper is just going at him with the paddles trying to resuscitate him. Keep in mind, these are shocks. This hurts the thing. And as Copper goes for the third plunge with the paddles, Norris's chest opens wide into this ghastly mouth and literally lops off both of Dr. Copper's arms. Instant death for Copper. Blood loss, shock, he's dead. Seeing this, McCready immediately turns the flamethrower on the transforming Norris. As Copper falls dead to the floor, Norris' thing sprouts up like this wicked nightmarish tree face bobbing from side to side. But Norris's original head separates from the body, sprouts legs into this new nightmarish spider looking motherfucker and starts to wander off, trying to hide and preserve itself. This is where I say it is impressive how convincing the thing can be. As Gary and Childs come in to douse the flames with fire extinguishers, Palmer is the first one to turn and see the head spider Norris thing trying to scramble away. And what does he give? A damn convincing performance. You gotta be fucking kidding. Now we move to the most iconic scene of the thing. It is the blood test. Based on his conversation with Fuchs earlier and based on what he just saw with Norris thing, McCready understands every part of the thing has a fight for survival instinct. If challenged, even if it's just a single particle or bit of it, it will react. So with the blood bank gone, he now has to conduct fresh blood tests. With Windows help and at gunpoint, or rather flamethrower point, he straps Childs, Gary, and Palmer to the couch. Now it's also worth noting, Clark was killed in the last scene when he tried to rush McCready. As such, the first two blood tests are conducted on the now dead Dr. Copper, just to make sure he wasn't turned, and Clark. Both come back negative. To this, Childs looks at McCready, and rightly so, calls him a murderer, even though you could, I guess, say self-defense. Nevertheless, he shot a man between the eyes who was not a monster. As we move through the blood test, we first clear windows, which allows him to begin administering the test to others. We move down the line and there's a beautiful, beautiful misdirection here. You see that the person McCready actually believes to be the thing is Gary, because in his mind, only Gary could have gotten to that blood bank. Well, McCready,
This is fantastic misdirection here. On cue, Palmer's face splits open. He's still tied on the couch to Gary and Childs. They are losing their minds. Windows over there with the other flamethrower is basically too stunned to move, whereas McCready's flamethrower, because he's just been messing with it to use it to heat the needle, it's not kicking on. So there's this big delay that allows Palmer thing to get the jump on him. He breaks from the couch and immediately kills Windows. He is starting to turn him, but he's not gonna get a chance to. Eventually McCready gets his flamethrower working, lights up Palmer thing, who runs out and falls face down in the snow. McCready making sure the job is damn well done, throws a stick of dynamite onto the burning body. Bang, Palmer thing is gone. Coming back inside, you see that Windows is now beginning to turn and wasting no time whatsoever, McCready lights him up and ends that there. You get a great line here from Gary as well that I love. Have to have to let that play. I know you gentlemen have been through a lot. But when you find the time, I'd rather not spend the rest of this winter tied to this fucking couch! So as you can see, our ranks are getting pretty thin now. We started with 12 men, and we're now down to McCready, Childs, Gary, Knowles, and Blair. And that wraps up Act 2 of The Thing, taking us all the way through the blood test. Act 3 is going to be balls out crazy. I'm just going to tell you that right now. But that is for its own separate part because that is where things are the most difficult to pinpoint. So until next time.